Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to be watching gameplay from Cyberpunk 2077 to see how accurate all the signs of technology in this video game really are. We'll take a reflex booster that temporarily allows us to use the Kereznikov ability. This is Kereznikov. Taking a reflex booster via an inhalant, uh, well, I'm not sure if you can inhale adrenaline or whatever is going on over there, but this is not far-fetched at all. People will take Adderall to focus, even though they're not prescribed for it. They'll take steroids to put on muscle mass, even if they don't need it to survive. I mean, performance enhancers have been around for a very, very long time. This is just in the form of an inhalant instead of a pill or a needle, but very much so something like this, if, if it doesn't exist already, it certainly will in the future. Backing into Biomon. Sandra Dorset, NC570442. Got a winner. Or well, she will be if we can get her to a hospital. There's a few things going on here. The main character, V, just plugged in a cable from her vein to another person's skull? It looks like the information is showing up in her head as if it was just on a screen. Now we are certainly moving towards being able to do this, but short of plugging into someone's brain stem, people with certain allergies or ailments will wear medical bracelets in case they do end up going to a hospital and they're unconscious or having a seizure. The bracelet will tell the doctor the medical information for the patient, which will assist them in their treatment. It would make more sense to have a handheld device or an app on your phone where you can just plug it into somebody who has altered their body in this way to check all their information. You might not even need cables. Like when you're this far ahead into the future and all this technology is readily available, I mean, I'm sure they got Bluetooth or other wireless technology accessible at this point. What they have here is a very similar service to what actually is already offered to anyone who has a Fitbit. If you get an arrhythmia, you can actually set these settings so that when it detects your heart rate is not regular, it'll just automatically dial 911 and come right to your location. Now imagine if at birth you were given not a Fitbit, but something that was surgically implanted into you, like into your brainstem, for example. And from the moment you were born, it recorded all of your brainwave activity, your body temperature, your weight fluctuations, your sleep patterns. Then the doctors would only have to just scan that little chip inside of your brainstem or your skull, wherever it may be, and they will have everything from the moment you were born. That is a doctor's dream because patients will lie all the time. It shows us where to find some Nicola soda. I can't tell if that guy doing curls has augmented arms or if he had an injury that required a surgery. The boxer training with the robot is pretty cool, though I'm not sure why he's plugged into the ceiling, the, the robot, not the boxer. <laughs> There's gotta be some technology where he can be wireless. There's gotta be at least one point in every kid's life where you think you're really good at a video game and then you set a CPU to level nine in Super Smash Bros and you're like, oh, so that's how you use that character. Same thing can apply to the robot here. You can set it so you have like Mike Tyson level or just amateur, like just started boxing and then you can really teach that AI to counter every punch you throw and know all of your movements and it will be your perfect sparring partner. I would imagine a level nine boxing robot using its electric motor for reflexes and the metal arms will hurt, making this robot likely the best boxer in the entire world, except for its later updates and iterations. Slot in the show. See, got a classic tale for you. Psycho game, just doing his thing, jumped a corp convoy, got away with gear. Wait a minute, wait, how is she seeing all of this? The idea of plugging a flash drive into our heads and then just downloading all the information is very Matrix life, although I, and I, I believe certainly that, that one day that will be possible. This is interesting because I'm not sure how they would be able to visualize all the information in your brain like that. Is she able to see in her immediate environment while this is playing in her head? Or is she blind to what's happening around her in the car that she's in? I mean, that, that would give one interesting feeling of vertigo because your brain knows that your body's in motion, but what you're visualizing is, is all of this. I mean, how does she not throw up every two seconds? 
Discomfort, maybe blurred vision, low contrast, glitches. With the scanner, we can zoom in on things and take a closer look. We are fast approaching this technology, much faster than people probably think. There's already LASIK eye surgery that can give a person perfect 20-20 vision with a very high success rate and very little recovery time. And I'm not entirely sure to call this guy a surgeon or an engineer who's implanting this new bionic eye into V's face, but either way, it does not look sanitary. The guy himself has bionic hands that he uses to conduct the procedure instead of any medical tools, which would actually give him a huge advantage if he wanted to go through medical school and become a surgeon, just as this new eye would be a super advantage to any sniper in the military. Like, who needs a scope but you can just zoom in with your naked eye and you can just see it as far as you want depending on how, you know, far and uh, accurate the image that comes up from the zoom is. You could also just filter it so that you're seeing thermal vision, for example. That you can literally see like what Predator sees in the Predator movies. So that way you can almost see through walls and you can detect human bodies with very, very fine point accuracy. And then you would be the best soldier around. I mean, anyone who has that technology would be far superior to the average person who doesn't have any of it. These are all operating from your nervous system. To surgically install them, you would need to reroute or remove all the blood vessels that would normally go to that area and make sure that they don't heal back. Otherwise, they'll just be bleeding all the time. It makes sense that these eyes would be able to scan someone for their ID because they have all the biotech that can be read by other people. Now conversely, if you have armor over a car or a specific biotech that protects your personal information to avoid these scanners, that already exists today. If there's a very thin sheet of lead just layered in their clothing or around the car's frame, then x-rays, gamma rays, and others won't be able to penetrate and scan it. There's a scene in the movie Gattaca where there is a piano player who's playing with six fingers on each hand. Now they're playing music that can only be played by them. Anyone that has five fingers on each hand cannot play the notes that this guy has access to. He just literally has a biological advantage. Now, th that's genetic engineering. It's not quite the same as becoming a cyborg. How are all these powered? If it runs out of battery, do you just lose your vision until it's replaced or recharged? And that one dude with the golden arm? That is gonna be really, really heavy. And I don't know if the rest of his muscles and shoulder can actually keep up with moving that weight all the time. In addition to that, each of these electrical devices is gonna give off a little bit of excess energy from heat loss. And when you have something in your eye socket, the more you use it, which is every time you open your eyes, it's gonna get really, really hot. It's like a computer with no fan. Something like that is going to seriously burn your skin. So with all these augmentations, it's really important to make sure that you have your temperature and power control as perfect as possible. Otherwise, you're going to actually do a lot of damage to yourself while you're using it. I wonder if you'd be able to go backwards to take the machine away and then just put human flesh and blood vessels and reconnect all that back together. My gut tells me no. But if there's anyone in the comments section that might know more about this, uh, please let me know. I'm really curious to see what you guys think about it. Got this thing. Don't even got no standard port. Bells and whistles, though. Dynamic camo armor and motor impulses rival in that of the human nervous system. Its actuators are actually pimped with titanium fiber, and it can go anywhere. The first thing that sticks out to me, besides the discount Master Yi, is that he literally connects with the robot and his face changes color to show that he's connected to it. And I wonder if he can only see what the robot sees. When he said the robot's motor impulses rival that of the human nervous system, it's not that impressive because that technology exists today. Our neurons run on electrical impulses, just like circuits and electronics, with the microprocessor being the brain. An actuator is a device that creates motion by converting air, fluid, or electricity into energy. The actuator in a robot like this one is most likely a servo motor, which will use electricity to produce the motion. To say the actuators are pimped out with titanium fiber isn't all that awesome because it doesn't actually do anything for the performance of the robot. I mean, it would be one thing if he was talking about like carbon fiber or other sorts of materials. I'm just thinking titanium 
Might not be the best idea here. It's a lot of cost for not a lot of return and performance. If they went with steel or even plastic in some cases, it would get the job done just fine. I have no idea how this thing is crawling on the ceiling like that. Even like those really, really small contact points with their surface area. If you had the strongest electromagnet, it, it, it even it's just pushing it. it doesn't make any sense i mean this robot looks really similar to spot a boston dynamics robot and for those of you who haven't seen this thing it it, it looks straight out of a movie what you're seeing in this clip is not animated this is real they have hundreds of them and it's wild. Boston Dynamics and some other robotics companies have actually taken a pledge to not give their robots guns. I don't know how long that's gonna last, but I'm really happy that they publicly said we are not gonna do it, we're not taking any contracts like that, because if you have seen what Boston Dynamics is doing, those robots will blow your mind. I'm not just talking about Spot but it takes cyberpunk to a reality that's like oh you mean i can just take a flight to boston and see like a bunch of these yeah they are ridiculous in the world of cyberpunk once you are jacked into a network you have access to everything it connects to through this maelstrom gang map we've now connected to the gang hideouts internal network this is the building's personnel system let's focus on what was just said here was when you are jacked into a network you have access to everything it connects to that statement is not wrong it's incomplete that would be like me saying if i connect to public wi-fi then i can remotely access everyone's computer connected to that wi-fi maybe but not certainly what they're referring to here is called a node, and a node is a point where two or more intersections occur. This can apply to both digital and analog circuits. For analog, it's where two wires actually cross paths, and that middle point of where they intersect each other and connect is called a node. If that intersection point is hijacked, then all of the electrical components, directly or indirectly, connected to it will be affected. This doesn't mean that the whole system comes crashing down, because there are many nodes in a computer system, and I'm talking about millions and billions of them. When hackers are looking to take control of a computer network, they're not going after the individual computers, they're going after the central node or server, for example, that all these computers connect to. Because if you control that one node, then you can influence the hundreds of computers that are attached to that node. 